Hey, how's it going? My name is Hellbent and welcome to Auto Hotkey mini tutorial number 11. In this one, we're going to take a look at creating random numbers. So the way we're going to do this in this tutorial is I'm going to use hotkeys to actually execute the code. But uh, for logistics purposes, you can use this in any of your code that you want. So you don't have to use it in a hotkey like we're going to be doing here. So I'm going to create my hotkey. I'm just going to use number pad one, make it simple for me. And the first thing I'm going to do once I get this set up is I am going to type out the code or the command to actually create a random number so all you do is you just type in random and then you want to associate a or load that into a variable so we're going to create a variable I'm going to call it rn for random number and then I need a range of values so the minimum and the maximum that the range can be so I'm gonna pick a range of 1 to 10 and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna display that on a tooltip and what am I rn Okay, so here we go. We have our way that we're going to generate our random number and then the way that we're going to display what we ended up getting. So I'll run this and now that it's running I just hit number pad 1 and I see that the first number it's coming up with is 1 and if I run it again it'll continue to create new random numbers. Uh, that's the first way that we'll look at. Next what I'll do is in the same line is I'll create, so let's say if I want to have random X and Y locations on my screen. So what I'll do is I'll create two random numbers. The first one I'll associate with a variable that I'm going to call X and I'm going to set its range to, so this is going to be the X axis of the screen. So I'm going to set it to about 300 pixels to about 900 pixels. So the, value, the range is 300 up to 900 and then I'm going to do the same with the y-axis and I'm going to call my output variable y and I'm going to do a range of about 200 to about 500 so we can clearly see it on the screen and next what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have my mouse move to that location Okay, I think we have our code here. So now when I run this, and if I hit number pad one, it should move my mouse. Okay, and if I keep pressing, it'll continue to move to random locations. Okay, <clears throat> so that's the basic way that we generate a random number. Now let's say that I have a situation where I want to exclude a specific value. So I'll show you here quickly how to exclude a number out of uh, the possible thing. So what I'm first going to do is as soon as it comes into this, I'm going to create an infinite loop. And inside of this loop, I'm going to create my random number. And I'm going to create my output variable. I'm just going to call it rn again. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it so that way I want to pick a random number between minus 5 and positive 5 but I don't want the value of 0 I never want 0 it can be any other number within that range except for 0 so the way I exclude 0 out of it is I just say <clears throat> if the variable that I've assigned my random number to if rn does not equal 0 then I can just break out of this infinite loop and then I'll display our random number. Okay, there's our code. So now when I do this and press number pad one, I should never get the number zero. So the number zero will never pop up because I've excluded it from the possibles. Okay, so that's that. And the last example, which is a little bit bigger or a lot more code, 
is I'm going to make it so that way a number never duplicates itself. So the way I'm going to do this, okay, so let me, let's think of it this way. Let's say if I have 10 people, so I'm going to associate each person in that group of 10 people with a number. So, you know, pers the first person will be associated with the number one, the second person, number two, number three. So let's say if I have 10 people, I've associated them with the number, and I'm trying to create a randomized list of who's going to perform a specific action first. Right. Obviously, I don't want the same person doing that same action twice. I only want them to do it once. So what I have to do is I have to set up this random number generator to only output the specific value once. So what I need to do for this is I'm going to first create a an array. And so here I've created a, an array. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable that's going to represent the position within that array. And I'm going to set its initial value to 1. And then I'm going to come into a loop. I might need to add another variable up there, but I can't remember yet. So I'm going to come into an infinite loop. And right away, I'm going to create a random number. And I'm going to associate it with a variable, rn. And I'm going to have a range of 1 to 10. So I have 10 people. And now what I need to do is I'm going to create another variable that is also going to represent the position within the array, but I'm going to be using this one over and over and over again. So I'm going to create a variable called j, and I'm going to set its initial value to 1, and I'm going to come into another loop, but this time I'm only going to loop the number of times, the number of elements that are in my array, or the number of people that I'm actually working with. So this time I'm going to come into a loop that's 10, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to test to see if the value that's stored in any of the previous um, elements in my array, if any of them, oh, I suppose I should uh, say that this is an if statement. So if any of the positions are equal to the value that's currently stored in that rn, or the last random number that I generated, if any of them is equal to that, what I'm going to do, oh, now I do remember I need another variable. Okay. <clears throat> I do need to declare another variable. So what I'm going to do up here is I'm going to create another variable, and I'm going to call it rerun. And this variable, all it's going to do is, if it has a specific value of 0 or a 1, it'll tell me that I have to rerun this uh, random number generator again. Okay, so in here, if the number any if any of the elements in my array are equal to the current random number, what I want to do is I want to rerun that random number generator again. So here I'm going to take that rerun variable and I'm going to set it to a value of one. And then if any of them match up, I don't need to continue going through this loop. So what I can do is right here, I can just add in a break. So it jumps out of this loop as soon as it says, hey, this is matching. We don't want that. And it'll break out of this loop here. If it doesn't match, if it doesn't match that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that J variable and I'm going to increment it so it'll test the next position in the array. So I'll say J++. plus plus and then there. So it'll run through this 10 times. If any of them match, it'll break out and then rerun the number generator again. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to test here to see if that rerun variable actually is a value of 1. So <clears throat> if our uh, rerun variable does not equal, if it does not equal 1, then what we're going to do is we're going to say I keep holding down control and, oh man, whatever. I keep holding down the wrong button and pressing enter. Okay, so anyways, if our rerun variable does not equal one, what we're going to do is, let me think. We are going to, okay, we're going to take our array and we're going to take the position i, so whatever i currently is. So this first time it'll run through, i will equal 1. So it'll be our first position in our array. And we're going to say that that is equal to the value that's in the rn variable. So we're saying that we're going to take that random number and we're going to put it in our array. 
and then if it once it runs back through again we're going to make sure that our next position is going to be the next position in our array so we're going to take that and add one to it we know that we only have 10 positions in this and we're, since we're inside of an infinite loop right now all we're going to do here is we're going to test to see if i equals 11 because if i equals 11 we know that we're done with our array or getting our numbers so we're just going to break out of this loop and then we can continue on with our code if all of these things are done what we're going to do is we're going to make sure to reset that value of rerun back to zero so that way it has the opportunity to actually become this part here which will allow us to add that element in so we'll reset the value of rerun back to zero so that way it'll come back up to the top create a new random number come into this loop and test if it equals that if it does equal that then it's going to rerun equals zero and this part won't be true so it'll rerun again and again and again until rerun does not equal one which will allow this to come into here and then assign our number so it can do this thousands of times even for these ten numbers but it's probably not going to be that much okay Next, because we're going to be done with our i variable by the time we get out of this loop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset that variable i back to a value of 1 because we're going to reuse it. And I'm going to create another variable that I'm just going to call temp because all we're going to be using this variable for is to actually display on a tooltip the elements of our array. Now what I want to do is I want to create a loop for 10 times or the number of times the number of elements that I'm going to be going through and in here what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that temp and I'm going to concatenate this so temp is equal to all of the positions in our array so with this dot equals all it's doing is that each time it runs through it'll take the value it'll add whatever is in array one to the temp and then right next to it it'll add the next element and the next element so i'll end up with instead of this being equal to one number it'll be equal to all 10 elements side by side so i'm going to say temp equals the value that's stored in array position i which to begin with will be one and then right beside that what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a new line character so that way when I put it onto our tooltip it'll each each number will have its own line <clears throat> right after that I'm going to take our I variable and add one to it now that we have all of those put into the same variable I'm going to create a tooltip and I'm going to display the value that we have stored in our temp variable and it should have them all the numbers in a column like this or yeah and let me see do I need to do anything else I think I think we have our code I might have missed something but we'll see so I run our code if I hit number pad one it should create a list of ten numbers all of them should be unique ranging from one to ten so this will be the order that people do something in and there we go we have our 10 numbers and none of them are repeated so the first person is person number six is going to do a task first next person 10 is going to do that task and then so on and I can regenerate this over and over and over again okay and that's it for this tutorial have a good evening and I'll see you on the next one